In this video, we're going to see an example of inheritance in Java. So inheritance allows us to create a new class using an existing class as a starting point. Here we have an animal class and it has a private string name and then it has a constructor. And as a reminder, when we see this, that's a reference to oneself. So if we made multiple animal objects, each one of those would have a reference called this that would be referring to itself. So when we say this name, we're talking about the member name versus here when we have name, we're talking about the parameter name. So this dot name refers to the private member name, which is getting overridden here by the parameter. And normally you wouldn't use a parameter name that's the same as a data member, but in this case of a constructor or any type of setter mutator method, I think it's fine because I think from the context it's clear what's going on. And then we have three methods. We have a getter for the name. Notice we don't have a setter. Once you create the animal object, it gets its name. And then we have speak and move methods. And these are just going to print some statement of, of what's going on. If this was a more complicated program, maybe here we would do something that actually, uh, say for example, if we had robot animals, they would actually cause some sort of motion to occur, uh, just depending on what the application is. But in this case, we're just going to print, hey, we're say hello when you ask me to speak. And then if you say to move, we'll say the name of the animal, and then we'll say is moving like an animal. So let's go ahead and create an animal object just to test that class out. So we'll create a new animal, if we can spell it right. And we'll call our animal George. And you'll notice we're getting a error here, and it's because we haven't imported animals. So now that I have this animal George, we'll say animal A. And we'll say a.speak, a.move, and then we'll print a blank line. So let's run this. So we have some errors. That's from a different file, so we can ignore that. You can see that we do print hello and George is moving like an animal, which is what we would expect. So now let's create a new class. And Eclipse will do a lot of this work for you. So it's important that you understand what Eclipse is doing. But once you understand how things work, it definitely could be a time saver to use its capabilities to save you some time for just some of the things that you're going to have to type over and over. So I'm going to create a class called dog and dog is an animal. So notice here is super class and you may not have noticed this before, but right now it says java.lang.object. Well, that's the parent class of every class. So no matter what kind of class you create, eventually it inherits from object. That's where the two string method is. There's some called equals and there's some other methods in there that every class gets. So then every object you create would have those methods. If you don't specify a parent class or a super class that you're going to inherit from, then by default, it'll be object. Now in our case, we're gonna do animal. And one thing to keep in mind is that animal inherits from object. So we can think of this class as being a grandchild of the object class. And the object class, I think, has sort of an unfortunate name because the class object distinction gets, diff gets difficult to understand when you're first learning Java. Just as a review, the class is the blueprint. That's the code that we write. And then when we actually create an object of that class's type, then that object is the realization of something created according to that blueprint that we define in our class. So here we're going to say superclass animal, and we'll go ahead and pull the constructors from the superclass. And when we say finish, here's my default class. Now we're not going to add anything else in the constructor. You will notice though that the constructor pulls in or calls super. Now what super is, is that's a reference to the parent class. So that would be animal. So this would be the same as calling animals constructor with that string. And notice string is uh, name is private and I'm going to override these methods from animal in my dog class. So I'm just going to copy them and then I'll paste them. 
And for speak, I'm going to say, uh, we'll do woof woof. And to move, we'll still print the name of the dog. And then we'll say is running. And it's a dog, so we'll use an exclamation point. Now you'll notice we have this error. And the field animal name is not visible. Now that may seem weird to you because dog is extending animal. So, so this dog class has essentially an animal object inside of it. All the pieces from animal are, are what we've used to build on dog on top of. So there is a name, but the problem is, is that the dog class doesn't have access to it. So one way to fix that is instead of private, if I make this protected, then this protected is sort of halfway between public and private. Protected members are private to everybody except for derived subclasses or child classes. So when we have a protected member, anything that inherits from this class is able to access this data member as though it was its own member. It's public. But anything that's not an animal or derived from an animal class is not going to have access to the name. Now, the downside is, is we can still change it, which is probably not ideal, but we won't discuss that yet. Okay, so now we have a dog, and this is just pulling an animal. Let's go ahead and just pull, pull in everything, because we're going to be using a lot of, well, we'll create a couple additional classes. So let's see, one, two, three, four. So now let's say dog D, and let's create that, act let's actually create that object, and we'll say new dog, and we'll call the dog buck. So then here we have dark D and then we'll say D speak and D move. So if I run this, okay, just what you would expect. So my dog will also play fetch. And when you do that, the dog will say ball ball. So let's go back to our animals or, or my animals. I'm sorry. Thing and we'll say d dot fetch. So if I run this, you'll see it's it it fetches. Now animal doesn't know how to fetch. If I do this, I'll get an error. Okay, now you've probably seen a dog. You know what a dog is, but the idea of an animal is more abstract than that, right? An animal could be a a cat, it could be a dog, it could be a snake, a bear. It could be a whale. It could be all sorts of things. So really, animal is not something that we would want to instantiate necessarily. To indicate that, we can say that this is an abstract class. And then when we do that, notice now can instantiate type animal, right? You can't create an animal. And, and that sort of lines up with what you would expect in general. Uh, let's suppose that we had a shape class hierarchy where we had a shape class that had area and perimeter methods, you would never want to instantiate just a shape. You would want it to have child classes for square, rectangle, triangle, and so forth. And then you would instantiate the specific shape. So that's essentially what we've done there. And of course, now we can't do any of this code as well. Okay, so now let's add a cat class. And its super class is going to be animal. Let's not imp implement any methods. The cat's not going to have any methods. So let's say new cat eek. So we'll say this is going to be a cat C. And we'll say C.speak and c dot move and so we when we run this we'll see that the cat says hello and the cat moves like an animal well this may give you a little bit of pause because you're thinking well first off the cat should speak and say meow it shouldn't say hello and you'll notice right now that when we when we call these methods on the cat object it's going to call the parent classes methods because we didn't override those methods in our cat class. 
But let's suppose that we want to force every animal to say how it speaks. Maybe for move, we don't really care. But for animal, we want to make sure that when you derive a class from, from animal, it has to tell us how we want it to speak. The way we do that is we create an abstract method. And an abstract method doesn't have a body. It just has a signature. So public abstract void speak. This means that since this extends animal, notice it must implement the inherited abstract method speak, or it would have to be abstract. So I could make this an abstract class, but cat I think is concrete enough for me to want to keep around. So I'm going to choose to add the unimplemented method. I can say system.out.println meow. So if I go back to my animals and I run this, notice the cat now says meow, but it's still, the move method is still using the animal move method. Just as a example, and I'll, I'll run the example and then I'll take this out. If I call super move in my dog class, notice now when I call D move here, it first prints out is Buck is moving like an animal, then Buck is running. And the reason for that is, again, remember, super is a reference to the parent class. So this is calling the parent class's move. If I did it here, if I just say move, it'll be this function. But if I say super move, it would be the parent class's move. So again, the purpose of those abstract methods is they provide sort of a a forced blueprint and they say hey you have to implement whatever method uh, one other thing is i always like putting uh, this override attribute and again that way if i decide to oh uh maybe we'll tell the cat how many times to say meow okay well if you do this because of that override attribute it'll say look you're supposed to be overriding something here and you're not because the signature has changed. So here, this will just make sure that you're overriding something that's actually exists in the parent class. One other thing that you can do, and this is sort of a preview of next week when we talk about polymorphism, but I can have an animal reference, but that animal reference has to refer to a child class. So I could say, okay, I'm gonna make a new dog and we'll call the new dog copper. And I'm going to copy all of this to the end of the program. And I'm going to say animal A. Animal A is a reference referring to a new dog. Now notice, speak and move, no problem. But when we get to fetch, it doesn't like that because fetch is undefined for the type animal so you can think of that animal reference as being sort of a window we're looking out at the actual object through we can only see the things that we're expecting to be there so our animal doesn't know how to fetch because that's defined in dog it only knows about the methods that are defined in its class which would be speak move and get name so if we run this this will run correctly, and you'll see that animal A says woof woof, and copper is running. Now, there is a way, actually, to treat this reference as a dog and get it to fetch. However, it involves a bunch of casting, and really, realistically, by the time you're doing all that casting, you have a design problem in your code, and so you should probably think about some fixes. This is a uh, quick overview of inheritance in Java, and in the next module, we'll use this to do some polymorphism.